Hey everybody, this is Justin. And I'm Bryce with Electric Bike Report. And today we're going to be reviewing the Norco Fluid VLT C1, an electric mountain bike from Norco that frankly is a ton of fun. And it also kicks off a new series of electric mountain bike reviews that Bryce and I are going to be doing. So hang tight with us as we dive into the Norco. Okay, so to start off, we are going to do a deep dive on the specs. So Bryce, I mean, this is an absolutely loaded bike from Narco. We have been spoiled rotten with this bike. So walk us through the specs, and then also I'm curious to know what were the key specs that really stood out to you? Okay, so like Justin said, we're gonna dive into the specs on this bike. Uh, this bike, we weighed it when we got it. This is a size four or equivalent to a size large. It came in at a res very respectable 39.9 pounds. And for a mid-power lightweight bike, that's a great weight. Now, it is 130 rear travel, 140 fork, so it's a shorter travel uh, trail bike with a mixed wheel setup, meaning that you've got a 27.5 rear wheel with a 29 inch front wheel. The drivetrain is SRAM. Again, best of the best, T-Type, XX, wireless transmission. Um, we've got SRAM ultimate level brakes with four piston front and rear, 180 mil rotors. The handlebar is a carbon one up, 800 mil wide. So it comes wide enough that you, if you want it shorter, you can cut it, but you're not gonna be wanting it any wider. And then it, the dropper is a 200 mil dropper. So again, just really the best of the best. And even, even with that, it comes with carbon Praxis cranks. Um, the wheel spec on this is an amazing spec. These are Crank Brothers Synthesis Enduro spec wheels uh, with 29 millimeter internal widths. Um, so you get fewer pinch flats. And then the tires that come spec on this are Continental Xynatol and Cryptotol coming in 2.4 widths. Yeah, so as you can tell, this is one loaded bike and the price reflects that. So this is their top of the line as Bryce mentioned. The MSRP is 11,499. You can walk down on spec. You add about four and a half pounds, but you can get down to just under $6,000. So with this spec though, Bryce, tell us kind of what really stood out to you. The thing I probably liked the most was, or what stood out to me was the suspension. RockShox, they nailed this. Like it is a short travel trail bike with a 130 rear suspension and 140 fork, but the geometry they paired that suspension with makes it ride like an enduro bike. Yeah, and I, I would say I noticed that. So the first ride that we took it out on was, a, was Zen, if any of you have ever ridden down here. Super technical, chunky. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like it because I usually want something with a little more suspension, but that thing, it was so much fun. I, I absolutely loved it on that. Yeah, and you like sus your suspension set up a little softer than I do. I got on it and I actually didn't like it. I put a little bit more pressure in the, the shock and the fork and I absolutely loved it. So it kind of can fit different riders. You just gotta play around with it a little bit. Now, having said that, one of the things that I thought stood out with this bike is the fact that they paired these, you know, this, these components to amazing geometry. On paper, the bike looks really long. It doesn't ride like a really long bike. Uh, I believe the suspension on this, S or the, the overall wheelbase is like 12... 1273. 1273, yeah. okay. So 1273 wheelbase, you've got a 65 degree head angle. The seat angle is pretty steep at like 70, almost 78? Yes. 77 mm -hmm. and a quarter, something like that. Oh, I got it right here, sorry. And, yeah, the effective seat tube angle is 77.75. And then you've got a chainstay on this bike of 444. So one of the unique things that Norco does that not very many bike companies do, but a lot of people are screaming for, is to have the seat angle and the chainstay change with the size of the bike. So size small and medium have the same seat angle and the same chainstay, but when you go to a large and an extra large, they steepen the seat angle with those sizes and they lengthen the chainstay by four millimeters 
in those sizes as well, which I think lends to how well the bike rides in every size. You get the same feel at every size. Yeah, and the other thing that for me made it really cool is how lightweight that bike is. When you get down below those the 40 pounds, combined with that just fun geometry um, and the high-end components obviously as well, it just made the ride so natural and smooth. I've been riding a lot more on the full power EMTBs lately. And so to go back to something a little more, you know, mid power, lighter weight, it just, it almost made me think, okay, if I was just gonna have one bike, this might be it because I can ride with my analog buddies. I can ride with a full power. We'll get more of that in the motor, but it was just, it was just a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing I would say and this is again coming uh, from a personal opinion. I don't necessarily love having the highest spec bike because these are wear items and you're gonna have to replace them. And you can get down to a weight similar to this with lower specs. So like if you got into this bike at a lower end and then you need to replace the drive pin, you could get something a little bit higher end. If you wanted to upgrade a carbon bar after you've bought a lower spec bike, you could do that. You could upgrade the brakes as though those wear out. Some of these things, you don't have to get the, the most expensive model to still get a really good bike and then you can upgrade it along the way. Unless you decide to steal the bike from Bosch, Shout out to Bosch for getting us this bike to review. We might just steal it so we can just start with the high-end spec. <laughs> so let's dive into what's at the heart of this e-bike, which is the e-motor. So it comes with the new Bosch SX mid-power motor with a 400 watt hour internal battery. You can also get a range extender uh, for that that's 250 watts, giving you a total of 650 watts on a mid-power lightweight e-bike. That is a ton. So specs on the motor, we get 55 newton meters of peak torque, 600 watts of peak power, which is outrageous, and then 250 watts nominal. Now, one of the things that's unique about this motor is that in order to get that 600 watts of peak power, you really have to be spinning at a high cadence. Yeah, and, and I would say like, I, my expectation actually was the cadence was, was gonna have to be abnormally high. Um, and we'll get then to that with a hill test, but it was actually more natural than I expected. That's exactly how my experience was. I, at first, when I got on the bike, I thought, I just need to concentrate on keeping a high cadence. But when I forgot about that and just rode the bike, it's just, it's it phenomenal. felt so good. It yeah. felt just as fast. I really felt like I was on a full power e-bike. Yeah, in fact, the first time I rode it, you were on your full power. I was on this one and I, kept up just fine. Yep. I mean, I don't keep up with him normally. <laughs> He's a little faster than I am, but I was able to keep up my normal distance <laughs> behind you. Um, and the thing that stands out the most to me on this motor, that 600 watts, when you look at what they, what they call power to weight ratio, so that's the number of watts divided by the, the weight, right, of the, of, the, of the motor. So the weight on the Performance Line SX battery plus motor is 8.8 .8 pounds. When you take 600 watts divided by 8.8 .8 pounds, you get 136 is the power to weight ratio, and you feel that on the trail. It just makes it feel super punchy, super, it makes the bike even feel lighter than it is, which is just awesome. Fun. Bottom and line, F-U-N. Fun. Fun. Yes, exactly. Um, and when you compare that to some of the other mid-weight motors, the Fizua Ride 60, Specialized SL 1.2, the TQ, HBR 50, like those are all on the power to weight ratios, you know, 83.3, 81.4, 85.8. And so, no, they did not up the torque, but they upped the, amp, or up the watts that actually equals the wattage of the CX race motor and crazy. the performance CX. So yeah. absolutely crazy. And I mean, really, like you said, F-U-N and a ton of fun. Yeah. Okay, so we have sung the praises of this motor on spec. Now, how does it do in the real world? To test that, we take it out both to Hellhole, which is our normal you know, stomping grounds for a hill test where we take every bike here to let your bike report. But we also added another test that it's a mile long climb up double track. And so it's a little bit longer of a test and the two combined really showed us some very interesting data on the Bosch SX motor. So with that being said, I'm gonna send you to myself because I did both those hill tests and we're gonna climb both Hellhole and that double track.
All right, now we are out on Hellhole with the Norco and powered by that Bosch SX motor, which I've wanted to take out on Hellhole for a year. Um, so we're gonna see how it does. Again, the bike's super light. This one weighed in right under 40 pounds without pedals and it feels light. Um, the motor so far is incredibly quiet and I'm trying to find like what I found again with this XX motor to get the cadence right and it it doesn't feel quite full power but it feels good it feels very peppy very punchy for a lightweight motor and I think right now my biggest surprise is how quiet it sounds there we go downshifted brought that cadence up a little bit more to access all 600 watts of power And you heard it there a little bit more. Yeah, it feels fantastic. I don't think this is gonna beat, obviously the full power, but it might hang with it. Um, and the feel of it climbing is very smooth, very controlled, very natural, yet punchy. I'll say I'm finding that I Again, my cadence needs to be a little bit, a little bit faster, you get more power. It's kind of how they designed it. Translates to a really good ride on the trail. And let's go to the tape and see how it translated to the hellhole hill climb. Okay, here we are on the Norco VL, Fluid VLT with the Bosch XX motor, which I have been excited to test on the hill for a good year plus now. So very excited to see how this does, you know, stacked up against the full power motors. It feels fantastic on the trail, very natural. I have to have a slightly higher cadence in some cases, but we'll see when you, you know, when you get into these hill climbs, you want to tap into the full 600 watts of power. We'll see what you have to do. So let's hit this hill and see how the SX motor compares to the others. So on the hill, I will say, it doesn't feel as powerful as like a Bosch Performance CX or Broza 2.2, but it, it seems like I'm going as fast. <laughs> so it does not feel underpowered by any means, um, especially if you get the cadence correct. And it seems to be pretty natural on the cadence. I would say, Sometimes if you're going up like a long gradual climb, I found that I have to downshift, tap into that, you know, higher wattage, and I can shift back up if I want. 
but it's pretty natural. Pretty impressive the power output you can get out of such a lightweight motor. Um, I'll also listen to the motor here. There you go, you can hear me as I pick up my cadence there. But yeah, you can hear it a little bit, but it does. To me, it feels, sounds a bit quieter than the Performance CX. So very impressive that they're able to do that and just continually improve as these new motors come out. With that being said, let's go to the tape and see how this thing compares. Okay, so up hell hole, the results were pretty impressive. It was a minute and 46 seconds to climb hell hole, which averaged 10.2 miles per hour. And up the climb to the water tower, it was three minutes and 54 seconds and averaged 13.3 miles per hour. Now, the things that really stood out to me is I did actually compare this back to back to the Bosch CX performance motor. And on, on the climb to the water tower, it was only 19 seconds slower. On the climb to hell hole, it was 17 seconds slower. That might sound like a lot, but in reality, it's not that much of a difference. And the bike just felt very light, very fun. I was passing people up on the hill to where I kind of felt bad because I was in like the middle of a test. It was like, on your left, you know, and they're like, this is double track. What are you trying to, you know, what are you trying to prove? Um, but it really did climb better than I expected. As I mentioned in, in the video, sometimes I did have to shift to get into that cadence, like maybe one shift is all, um, but really only on those long drawn out climbs that you don't see much on normal trails. So, you know, that was uh, for me again, like two very solid thumbs up for this motor. So that's obviously in our testing real world. What were your, what was your experience on? Yeah, thanks Justin. So like I said before, when I first got on it, you know, I, I was like, Hey, I need to keep my cadence high. But once I really forgot about that, and just rode it, it felt amazing. Um, in fact, it felt so nice riding that motor that there were times on, on some of the climbs where I was got in my head thinking, okay, how does this compare to like a full power, a full fat EMTB? And I kept thinking, man, I can't see how this wouldn't keep up on this trail with a full power bike, right? Yeah. That was my impression of the motor on our trails that we, that we ride every day. Um, it was only until I was able to ride this bike back to back with another full power where I was like, okay, I, see, I can see the difference if you ride it back to back. But you could totally, if you're riding with a pack of, of guys that are on full power bikes, as long as they're not full turbo 100% of the time, you can keep up with them. And that actually uh, is pretty cool that you can actually get one bike that you can ride with your guys that don't have e-bikes. You can ride with guys that have mid power bikes. You can ride with guys with full power bikes. And so that I think is probably the the standout on this bike for me. Yeah, and, and I agree 100% on that. The only other part that I would add is kind of the Bosch motor, you know, motors in general are known for their punchiness. And so I actually found a lot more value on the SX motor on normal trails where you've really got to crank it to get up like something steep and technical, like, yep. you know, one or two boulders or something like that. That's where it performs even better than on these long drawn out climbs that again, no one's really mountain biking to go up along you know, slight drawn out climb. Right, right. Um, but in the real world, I mean, it's just super fun. And yeah, you definitely can keep up with those full powers as long as they're not in turbo and cranking it as hard as possible. Yeah. And even then, I think if you're a stronger rider, you could keep up. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So guys, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be going out on the range test. Uh, kind of test this bike out on all kinds of different uh, trails we're going to be riding as far as this thing will go and we'll do some checkpoints along the way let you know how it's riding how it feels and go from there all right we'll see you on the trail all right so we're first checkpoint here we're a few miles in three four miles um so far this i feel like this this motor does really well um especially for a mid-power motor um, there seems to be a, a little bit of a rattle on the downhill, kind of like the same, same type of rattle you would hear from the, the Bosch CX motor. Um, one of the things I've noticed just off the bat is that I'm sure like a lot of you, I had heard a lot about this 
Bosch SX motor being a motor that you have to keep the cadence high in. And so at first, I was really focused on like, hey, keeping the cadence high, making sure my feet are moving, trying to get the most, the most out of the, out of the motor. Well, I found myself getting so focused on the cadence that it was kind of distracting. So after I just kind of forgot about that and just, just rode the bike, you know, shift when, shift when you feel like, when you feel like your legs start to put in more power, just shift a little bit, shift one, and it's right back. Like, the more your legs work, the less the motor works. So, you have to shift a little bit more than you do on a full power motor, but, I feel like you get similar power out of it. Anyway, those are uh, some thoughts so far. Hey guys, first checkpoint. We are at the top of Stuky Springs. We have gone 26 minutes, six miles, six and a half miles, average speed 15.2, elevation climbed 1,035. Battery on this at this point. Um, we are at the fourth bar on the indicator and it has turned from green to white. So, um, we'll check back in. All right guys, we're at the top of checkpoint two. We are into this 49 minutes, 12 and a half miles, 15.4 average miles per hour. And we've climbed 1,361 feet. So we're kind of at the at the end of like the fast and flowy not too steep up or down section of our test loop we're going to start heading down some some of the more technical chunky terrain and then we're going to head up zim which is a pretty technical and a fairly steep uphill climb so we'll check check back in at the top of at the top of the climb of zen kind of give you some idea of our battery range at that point and then also how it handles that climb up there right now battery wise we are on our third bar with the that bar going from green to white so approximately 50 or a little under 50 percent battery at this point all right check back in later okay we're at the top of zen at this point we've got two bars left on the battery indicator those are both in orange so we're less than 40 percent battery total time we're at a minute or excuse me an hour 13 minutes 16.2 miles average speed 13.3 Total feet climbed, 2,148. Um, we're gonna go ahead and send this down. The chunky stuff, stuff I like, it's pretty fun. And we'll check in on the next one. Okay, we're at the bottom of the next checkpoint, bottom of Zen, and we are a total of an hour and 34 minutes, just under 20 miles, average speed total of 12.6, and an elevation of 2,398 total. Um, right now on the bike, it is on the last bar. It's been there for a minute, so it's got to be between probably 10 and 20 percent, somewhere in there. So uh, we'll check back in when this dies and maybe get some some final thoughts after that. Okay, we're at the bottom of Bear Claw. This is the end of the standard loop. We are a total of two hours and three minutes, 24.3 miles, average speed 12 miles an hour, and total elevation of 2,800 feet, just a little over 2,800. So we've got the last bar on the battery indicator showing red it switches from orange to red when you go below 10%. So it did cut out a little bit of the power, but it's not that much. We're going to go ahead and pedal this out again until it dies, and we'll check in with you then.
it looks like we felt the bottom on that one it's not a harsh bottom out but you can definitely feel it i mean it is a 130 130 travel so didn't feel too bad coming off of that at all we're still on that last bar the battery showing red it hasn't started blinking yet i think i think when it starts blinking you're at about five percent i think we're probably still still above that i just can't help but uh One of the things I love about this bike is how natural it feels. It really does feel like kind of a mid to short travel 29er as far as how poppy, playful, light, you know, all that stuff. It's not going to take on the biggest lines, but you can certainly get it to its limits and still feel comfortable. that was a butterfly I almost swallowed just now <laughs> oh. okay just pedaled up not too far up the trail we finished uh, about a half a mile further than when we stopped where it was just showing red we are at a total time of two hours and eight minutes 24.81 miles and a total elevation of 2853 feet of climbing so it turns out that last bar goes it doesn't start blinking after it's just right it just it just dies so um anyway there we are that's the end of the ride bryce you're the one that did the rain test so tell us how it did okay so it's a mix of trails you've got some some flatter terrain you've got some flowy you've got some technical you got some steep it's kind of a mix of everything the test loop itself is 23 and a half miles and uh, about 2700 feet of elevation um, so with this bike in turbo mode it went a total of 24.8 miles and a total elevation of 2850 feet in just over two hours Time of death on this was two hours and seven minutes. And that was just with the inter internal 400 watt hour battery. Yeah, which to be honest is pretty impressive. And so we then took it out and had Asha do it with the Powermore 250, because this bike is, is compatible with Bosch's new Powermore 250 range extender, um, which you connect it kind of in that down tube there. And she was able to get, how many miles was that? We've got 36.13 miles and 3,266 feet of elevation in a ride time of three hours and two minutes. So turbo mode for three hours on a lightweight bike. <laughs> and, and I will also say, so Osh is an XC rider. I can't keep up with her. Um, she rides on, on the varsity team. And usually, so we'll have her do kind of like these extra long range tests so we don't have to be out there that long. And usually she does not like EMTBs, but this one, because of the weight and because of how it handled, she just like, that was a really fun test. So with that, was there anything that kind of stood out as you were doing the range test with the motor? Sometimes these motors, as you get deeper into the range test, more miles, they start to kind of drop off in power. How was that? How was that power or was there a power drop off with the SX motor? I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that I've noticed riding Bosch motors specifically is that as your battery levels go down, the power doesn't diminish until you're almost dead. And then it'll cut out a little bit. So with this, um, it didn't cut out at all. It stayed the whole way until it died, which I, I had one bar left and I thought, and, and that was at the end of the loop. And I thought, okay, we're going to go back out and see how much forward it'll go. It literally just went like a half a mile and was gone. So when it goes, it's done. So in other words, we kind of built the perfect loop for this bike. It really is. Open done. One of the things that also happened on this ride was that at the, at, at, at one point the motor got quite a bit louder, noticeably louder. Mm -hmm. And I think that was just because of the heat. It produces a lot of Watts. Um, and I think at that point it was just a little louder. And then after three or four minutes, the noise reduced back to, to, to what it is normally. I don't know if it, other riders or any other testers have had that experience, but that was just 
something and, that happened. And so when it was producing that, when it was louder, were you getting a decrease in power output or did it still feel good yeah, on good, that? Yeah, good question. Uh, no, there was no decrease in power. That's the cool. power was the same. It was just the noise that was that was a little little higher pitch and a little louder. Mm -hmm. No, so I will say before this, I thought we were gonna get about 21, 22 miles. Um, and I will also say, when you hear 24 miles, that may not sound very far. Uh, that's a pretty good ride. That's a very solid ride. And the thing that I really like is by adding that power more 250, to get 36 miles in turbo, to be honest, I don't ride in turbo that often. I actually love their EMTB setting, um, which means you're even gonna get farther. So I just love the fact that it's such a lightweight bike with that much power output that I can go in and get a good two to three plus hour ride in, which for me, it's tough to sneak off for more than three hours. So it's, it's almost like the perfect battery size weight ratio for me. Wasn't too harsh at the bottom, but see how it handles this. Let's climb. Oh, I was in the wrong gear, shifted during. So I had to push a little bit harder, but still made it up just fine. And that's kind of, I think, shows you how, how good that tram transmission is. That's what this bike has on it. On one of the steeper technical sections of Zen. <laughs> I accidentally shipped right in the middle. And the uh, drivetrain handled it perfectly. But more so, I think, than that is how impressive the bike and the motor handle that steep climb, even in the wrong gear. I think that's one of the things that some people, as you're looking at different bikes, whether you get a full power or a mid power e bike, EMTB. It's like, what are you compromise? What are you giving up when you choose one versus the other? And make no mistake, there's definitely a compromise, but man, so far, this SX motor doesn't seem to compromise a whole lot. All right. Final ascent up to the top of Zen. One of the things I've noticed, especially on this rougher terrain, more technical, is that I've had a handful of pedal strikes that were unexpected. Um, but other than that, God, it just is, gets over stuff. Just, just those pedal strikes. I think the bottom bracket it's a little low on this bike. I haven't looked at the geo chart yet, um, but it seems like it's fairly low. Um, I do know that these are the Praxis crank arms and they are, I believe, 165. So, I mean, with a bottom bracket that seems low and a motor that prefers a higher cadence to get more power. I think a 160 crank arm length would be a little better on this bike. The noise climbing is pretty quiet. I don't know how much the camera's picking up, but yeah, I mean, just, it's not much louder than the tires that's going over the, over the gravel and rocks and such. I think the most prominent noise is the rattle in the motor when you're going downhill. But 
climbing performance is really good and I think I said this earlier when you when you feel like you're really trying to happen to push hard with your legs the motor gives you less usually when you're pushing hard it's at a slower cadence on steep climbs so if you can just shift I mean not only does it make it easier but it seems like the motor gives you more so all right here we are is nice taking a lighter weight bike down slow chunky stuff the impacts are way way lighter a lot easier to handle and then bunny hopping this thing over little trail features is so fun you can just feel how light it is as you pick it up, I love it. So I just just glance down at the battery and we are on our final bar. Climbed up that without a pedal strike, that was good. And that, also good. Man, this part, doesn't matter what bike I'm on, full power, half power, it tests you. Whew, you can tell I'm breathing hard. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of that, um, Justin, what would you change about the bike at this point? I know you love it. I do love it. Can you pick um, it apart? Okay. So I think this was just luck of the draw, but the biggest thing for me was actually the tires. Our front tire had kind of a weird delamination issue. And I mean, I've reached out to other people that ride Continental a ton. They're great tires. Yeah. I, I think that was just pure unlucky i actually thought the, the the wheel was out of true at first because you could kind of see it wobbling a little bit and in the corners it felt a little sketchy at first yes it did it it felt that did change change the total feel of it because it it just had a little wobble um and so that i would change out but again i don't know if that's fair yeah <laughs> because it just might have been a one-off unlucky thing um I've got to get pretty picky beyond that because I just really do like this bike. That 200 mil seat post dropper, I almost feel like they could make it 180, but I like the 200 mil seat post dropper. So there's not a ton that I would change out on this bike again. I just loved it. What about you? So I think we should bring up that this bike also comes in a 140 spec. So you can get this bike that's a little bit more burly. You get a Lyric up front, you get a piggyback shock on the back, you get 150 travel front, 140 rear. And that's probably the bike I would lean more towards. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I would probably like to see on this bike is a bigger rotor. And I think that's what you're gonna get on you know, a 140, 150 versus the 130, 140. One of the things that, that I had a little bit of an issue with at first was pedal strikes. But then once I stiffened up the suspension and uh, made it ride more like a short travel trail bike, I had zero issues with pedal strikes. So personally, I would probably opt for the 140 version over the 130. Um, the other thing that for me, again, this is personal preference, they've sized these bikes one through five instead of extra small through large. And within those sizes, there's a pretty wide variety of height ranges that will fit sizes two, three, four, and five. I fit in the size of the, of the size four. Um, I would probably size down. I've got 
a shorter tor torso, longer legs for my height, but I would still probably like a shorter dropper that I had it slammed all the way and, and at 200 mil, it was still a little bit too much for me. And I would also like a higher rise bar. So again, that for me kind of lends more towards the 140, 150 mm -hmm. bike. Yeah, and I'll agree on the rise bar as well. Um, and also say that I'm just grateful that it was a size four because that's just perfect for me. 5'11", average as you can get. Um, fit me like a glove, just had a ton of fun. I really like this one. I might want a little more travel just to just to do a little bit more with it, but I think you're fantastic with it, with it as, as it is now. Too. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna know the type of rider you are. Do you like a little bit more travel? Do you like more of the shorter travel feel? If you like short travel trail bikes, this is it. If you like a little bit more of a burly trail bike or even bordered on enduro, you're gonna want the 140, 150. So thanks for joining us today on this review. Um, as you can tell, we love the bike. A huge shout out and thanks to Bosch and Norco for making this happen. Um, I'm really excited to be part of the Electric Bike Report team. We've got some fun uh, bikes coming up that we're gonna be reviewing, so stay tuned for those. Yeah, and again, Bryce, we're excited to have you. Um, we, we again hope this review was very helpful. If you have any questions or comments, things that we didn't cover, please leave those down below. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely get back to you. There are also down in the description, there will be a link to our full in-depth review and where you'll see all the data, all the photos, just everything about the bike. So yeah, with that being said, again, we, we hope this was very helpful and we hope to see you out on the trail soon.